So I'm dealing with, uh, I think, uh, storage issues with my phone and making these videos. But this, I guess, will turn into a parts uh, episode. And like I was um, previously saying, that uh, some people don't get the choice to uh, produce offspring that I just described, described in the first part. So um, that's why it's important to realize that in order for us to even exist, that our ancestors had to have reached these points of maturity. And what maturity is, is the ability to reproduce offspring. And um, that's important to realize because that amount of time is really how we can use that to kind of understand how far back our lineage goes. Because before modern um, laws and culture and everything, uh, it, it wasn't uncommon for people to start reproducing as soon as they reach those maturity levels and in different cultures you see that expressed in different ways um, through different celebrations of certain ages what we can use that to identify is let's say we'll use 13 years as a maturity rate for humans well if a normal human um, biblically speaking and through a lot of uh, modern um, people who have reached over the age of 100, uh, 100, around 120 seems to be a common time cap for human human life to really reach its um, uh, life expectancy. However, that's not, not every human reaches those points. And um, they use, we can kind of see that it's more common now to see people reach the ages of uh, 70 to 80 or even 90. However, even before uh, a lot of medicine came into development, it was more common to see people reach the ages of, you know, 30s and 40s and uh, 50s was, was when you started to see that it maxed out. So as it increases, then you start to see that people start to decide later on in their life during their lifespan that they're able to start to reproduce and um what that that does though is it if we look back onto what it was before our modern kind of culture and when people start to reproduce where they feel comfortable and don't feel that pressure of if I don't do it now then I I may never be able to make that decision and my lineage will end with me, um, which again, it's not the, it's a decision that each individual gets to make. And that's an incredible thing um, when we're given that opportunity to make that decision on our own. But many cultures didn't even allow people to make that decision. Uh, a lot of family members, when we start to go back into history, uh, the decision to mate or reproduce was determined by different factors and um, there's different cultures and as you go back you can't pinpoint and say this culture wasn't you know looking at it from our perspective that that was a little bit of a weird um, belief or anything like that um one second so uh as we continue to think about that and look back on it, you may find, you know, some very uncomforting um, ways that each of our lineage reproduced. And it begins to explain more and more the more that we anal look back and kind of analyze um, how they made the decisions and everything back in the day but to get back to an understanding of how incredible it is that we've made it to where we are all today that humanity was at one time not the amount of 
humans it is today. And it goes, if you take that back and back and back and back and back, you get to um, people who were the first humans. And what that really means is prior to those first humans existing, there was a different, what we would classify as species, um, that uh, was to a point that it was un almost would be unrecognizable today that you would consider them to be the same species. And commonly that is used to describe like Neanderthals or um, like they say um, humans all came from apes and stuff like that. And without using words, because that makes, that can kind of confuse when we start using those words and languages to describe things. Um, it can kind of uh, make people feel insignificant or less than others and that's not the case and uh, when we look at religions that are really focused on their own lineage uh, a lot of religions focus on their own lineage some do a better job at incorporating a world kind of lineage to their religion um, however you can look at those early um, documentations of a lineage and kind of get a understanding for how they viewed things and in some stories you'll hear that like you know gods or pretty much the large creators of your lineage um, how they chose to um, basically favor an offspring over another and the way that I can describe that to us so that we can understand really what that comes down to is um, when we start to breed other animals and we start to understand what animal breeding produces and everything and uh, dogs are an example that I'm going to use to um, like this guy right here, Max, where his lineage is, he's mostly a lab and he's also part cur, which is, uh, American cattle dog. But even those that we use now, at one point, those breeds weren't used to describe them. And you can say and expect the same thing from humans. When you have a family a lot of families all look similar, but you also have people that look different in the family. And oftentimes it was always kind of looked at where uh, families would not reproduce within families. But if you look at dogs, it's acceptable for some cultures to mate dogs with um, offspring that are from their exact lineage line and that's what creates breeds so different cultures throughout the years um, like some Spanish cultures when they came to the Americas is they actually laid out almost a breed chart where you can see where it says well if this and you know they use different words but it when this family mates with people of this family they create offspring that look like this and we call them this and that's what race really is. So when we start to take what humanity is today and look back on it, and you start to see how the number of people started to get smaller and inhabit different areas, that allows you to kind of visualize and understand really how over time people would start to inbreed with each other. And when you look at the science of inbreeding, what it can create is it can create uh, genetic differences or recessive traits that stand out more. And if you look at historical references of this, there's even kingdoms that, uh, or family lineage who promoted inbreeding. Some of them, uh, like 
uh, pharaohs and kings of olden days or, you know, thousands of years ago, they would seek to marry direct uh, siblings or um, close family members. And the when that happens, it creates profound um, features. So when you look at a group of people nowadays and you and you can look at someone and say well you look let's say of somebody who is from Europe or the area of you know the Caucasus area or and you say they all look similar you look at people from say an African region or an Indus region or different regions of the uh, earth you can start to say look at they all have these common characteristics and the way that that develops over time is because eventually like many people can picture today is you may know your um your brothers and sisters you may know your parents you may know your grandparents uh you may know your cousins you may know your second cousins but most people don't really keep record uh, whether it verbal or anything, past past that. So when we have that understanding, we can kind of understand that when that happens on a larger scale, you and in a certain an area where people don't travel not as much, where you'll now because traveling is uh, more affordable and more common, you'll see less of what you would consider as inbreeding or races having profound um, characteristics. And that's because back when we look back at humanity and we see humans, they might be um, reproducing with people who they seem like they are unrelated, but if you have that same, what we call now race or something, to some extent, when you take that family lineage back, you're gonna find common ancestry. And depending on how far back that common ancestry is, is will show you traits and bring those traits uh, genetically forward. So, Without trying to describe um, DNA because that's something that continuously and still is being developed and understood fully. But when you look at it in that respect, you start to understand, okay, that... So if a group of people, maybe in an area where you would have to cross large mountains or big oceans and um, different things like that, or people that live in island communities, they are, over time, will develop their own race. And if you look at dogs, you can create your, like the pit bull or other dogs that all exist today, is a easy way to understand, easier way to understand really how significant um, and how almost uh, common it is for people to want to uh, continue that, in a sense, inbreeding. Although it may not be an inbreeding that we acknowledge because it's not our immediate relatives. But when you um, mate with people of your same race, to some extent you are inbreeding. And then those characteristics of that inbreeding, like skin color or hairstyle or different traits, uh, features, those remain. And the ones that are uh, less prominent often go away. However, if you go down to sibling level, like how some cultures have done it in the past, then those traits that become very prominent and that's why it is said that 
um, and recommended that people do not do that now because it can create a mutation that is less desirable. And there's stories you can look up of people doing this. And if you want to look at animals, um, there's concerns with people that say when you do this with certain animals, like I'm going to use the example of the pug, the dog that is called the pug, if it's still around, which is one of the oldest dog breeds, um, their snouts are short. And now with some with people wanting to desire those short, short snouts and they don't consider that, um, and I'm not promoting uh, any sort of choice in how people do this, but when you start to see people who mate those short snouts and those short snouts, it is becoming an issue for some of those dogs to uh, survive. And then those dogs that don't survive and don't reach maturity, uh, they aren't able to reproduce and that lineage is ended. And that same thing has happened through humanity. And it even can create sterilization of certain uh, lineages. So again, it's not to promote one thing or the other. It's to so that we understand that these things have happened and existed. So when we start to see things in that light and understanding, uh, for me, I have came to the understanding that when we go back to the point where humanity began, and but when I say that, that is the separation of the human species from the previous species that came before it. Um, when we get to those points, you start to see large distinguish, large um, character uh, differences. And if those character differences are desirable, they, became, they become a desirable attribute that people seek out. Now, something else to make note of and to make sure that we all understand is that although in a lot of cultures currently, uh, monogamy or the breeding of yourself with only one other individual creates uh, siblings that all have similar characteristics. However, that's not, that hasn't always been the cultural norm, and uh, it wasn't uncommon for uh, people to have uh, multiple spouses and multiple siblings with those spouses. So when you look at things like that, you begin to start to see how we've had the differences and how those differences, depending on the attributes uh, that are desired during that uh, era with different people, is they they start to look at differently. And as you, the further uh, we go, the similar we'll see certain characteristics, and you'll be able to start to understand that what creates these and how they are created. Now, now that we're at the species of the beginning of a human species or a new species, what we need to think back then is what's the next species? And it's not important to identify and really know for sure what that species was, but it's important to understand that it, it had to, in order for humanity to exist, that other that other species had to exist prior to it and then even prior to that species there had to be another one and you go back and back and back until we get to points where we're at the very beginning species or the first bio organisms of a certain area now what creates those bio organisms is a atmosphere that was created through chemical organisms and chemicals that create these uh, off gases and different atmospheres or uh, different um, areas where life is possible. So when we think about that, it makes it 
hard to suggest that the human lineage came from one only one uh bioorganisms uh lineage and it would be more likely that what would we would see that was created was a world like the earth and an area of the world let's use the equator as a visualization where life was able to begin and be sustained to a level of maturity where it can be reproduced and recreated and with that understanding it allows us to potentially consider the idea that theoretically it would be more likely that whatever the subspecies of humans or and subspecies seems derogatory but whatever the previous species of humanity or earthlings was um existed and existed at a wide range so the first human of one lineage may be different from the first human of a different lineage and those the species that came before could have been widely spread among that area that was able to produce life so that time frame could have also been um spread out and what i mean by that is uh let's use the so we can visualize it let's use the world and the earth as an example is you could have uh whatever species came before humanity spread out into areas all across the globe and maybe areas on an island developed a uh, human species through whatever it may be but it would be what would be called today as a mutation to create humanity um away from that other species but it was a, deemed as a desirable trait so then that new species would have seemed more desirable and that could have been that mutation could have caused them to be more physically appealing more intellectually appealing more healthier whatever it may be and then that species could have been seen to, that that new life that was created and that could have been a whole family it could have been met multiple siblings all of those could have been seen to have desirable traits and what that would mean is other species that they see hey this this is they're us right because we look we could look at an example is like we can look at uh apes and humans and say they're we're both very different but then if you look at how we interact on a family level and how we take care of our young and stuff you can and how we both have appendages that are very similar and everything like that you can say okay we're very similar and the same thing goes to even human races how you can say well it looks like they're very clearly different than us but then you when you look at the similarities and stuff you say well we're more similar than we are different and that's something to understand when you look back at to that first species of where humanity began because for those people that were they wouldn't be as drastic of a difference as you see it now however when that stuff happens as it does happen today too you have families that say well we think that you should like we were we're not that may seem like a desirable trait to have but we we recommend that you don't do it and that's when you start to see the division over time over a long time and that division where you have to basically you don't have to decide but you would things would decide to you know follow and stay within what they feel comfortable as the lineage that they think should be uh continued so then you'll see maybe differences and wars start based off of well those people mate with those people and these people mate with these people and we don't associate ourselves with those people and now we're 
fighting over the same area and the same food. So either people have to choose to leave and start in their continue their lineage in a new area. And if you continue your lineage in a new area and you leave, depending on how large that group is, that is going to create its own little uh, race or species of things different. And if they are forced to not being able to uh, enter, uh, to mate with the previous species through whatever means, whether it's uh, choice or environment, then you start to, you'll start to see those races develop. And if that happens over the entire earth in areas that are able to produce life, you could have that um, species create a new species that is able to mate with um, other species of that same kind, but they could be scattered across the earth. So the idea that all of humanity comes from one lineage the lineage that you would have to say that that is um, would go down to a microorganism level. And even then, that microorganism may be an organism that's either duplicating itself or so it all came from that one microorganism uh, in a sense when you trace that small microorganism's lineage all the way back to its source lineage. Or it could mean that there was different areas that created their own biological organisms and each of those had its own development and that development is based on uh, what they could consume to eat, what they could reproduce with. And you could have a lineage that is further from the beginning source than another. And what I mean by that is you could have a lineage that is further from that first biological organism of its lineage. Maybe it took a thousand years from that bioorganism's lineage to change into a new species. And maybe based off of the how that species reproduced, it could develop faster or it could develop slower. And in the area of the earth, you could have that area start to have more mutations and start to have more species than another area. But it's very possible and most likely that because of the environment, these things in a relative sense started to produce more uh, variety of species um, based off of areas that they could live in, uh, things that they can consume, and all of those things. So hopefully that's something that we can understand. And that what that creates is an understanding that it's more likely that all of humanity didn't come from two parents of one lineage. And it is more likely that humanity, like all of the species came up from seemingly nothing but chemical organisms to biological organisms to more complex biological organisms that all come from mutation and environment and based off of how they are um, mating and what features become desirable and uh, beneficial to the success of that species. So that I think is important to understand um, prior to me going into explaining how we can take all that knowledge of how we got to where we are now and now use that to look back on, look at our lives in a smaller scale, which I'll do in the next part, and see how we can take all of that and look at, well, what's what do I need to focus on now? Now that I understand how a, a past and can be, I don't have to wonder and focus my time and energy on wondering, you know, where exactly, uh, 
you know, kind of the the who came first because it's un there's no way um unless we created a very complex understanding that we'd be able to see that unless we visited another existence that was earlier on and we could uh, observe it and take record for our own understanding so that we could then turn that understanding into advice and uh, predictions of the future. And that's what science is, um, is take observing things, understanding things. Once you observe them and understand them fully, which is a perspective that can be um, maliciously used and it can uh, create division and all this stuff if it is not, if it's looked at and used to promote negative things. If it's looked at and used to just gain an understanding, then it is not malicious at all and it's not suggestive at all. It's just to understand things and that's the intention of of this video so that we understand really that where we came from and currently the understanding that if you want to simplify it is that we just all came from something and we're all survivors every single one of us is a survivor we've all survived and we all have that choice of continuing the lineage however we see fit whatever we desire the next generation of our lineage to be is our choice and hopefully and that choice then will create the next uh species eventually and that species may already exist um it's something that